Okay. Uh, so this is the roll call. Uh, Mr. Chambers? Here. Ms. Mapp? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Ms. Holster. Here. Ms. Walden? Here. Dr. Lee? Here. All right, we do have a quorum present here tonight, so I'm going to ask at this time if you will stand with me for the prayer and the pledge. And you know what? Since I have the honor, I'm going to ask Mr. Craig, do the prayer for me tonight, Mr. Craig. You, you're good? Okay. Miss Emily, you good? Okay. Um, Mr. Craig had me to say the prayer one night for him, so let's look out there. All right, let's bow our heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you tonight to say thank you first and foremost for all that you allowed us to do today. We thank you for the meeting of minds that you have placed upon this dais, that we continue to move this city and county forward together. I ask that you continue to bless our first responders as we continue to move through seasons of uh, respiratory disorders and all kind of uh, illnesses that plague our city. We ask you to just continue to be with those that are, are walking with you daily and asking you for guidance on what to do and how to do. Father, I thank you because as I can ask every night, what can I do to help make this city better? That I ask you to show it to me. So I'm asking in, in Jesus' name tonight, amen. If you will, let's say with a prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Miss my s my next door neighbor, Mr. Reynolds, who has the radio voice to lead us <laughs> in our pledge and uh I miss him on tonight, but he'll be back with us. So good evening, everyone. It is indeed an honor to present our annual State of the City Address. I would like to begin by thanking each member of City Council <laughs> and the citizens of Milledgeville for your continued determination and resilience throughout 2022. As our community and this nation had made leaps and bounds to return to our daily routines and walks of life. Our community has gained back most of its original vibrancy, and I am excited for the days ahead of us. I am equally proud of how the great men and women that work for the city of Milledgeville have been able to continuously provide the same high levels of operations and services throughout the 2022 uh, to our constituents, all while navigating through our national economic challenges such as labor labor retention, services, product and shipping delays, and salary and wages gaps. The city of Milledgeville has been fortunate, fortunate to retain skilled and dedicated staff that share the common goal of providing quality services to this community. 2022 has shown us that we are yet again thriving and striving, and as the pandemic guidelines have loosened, the city of Milledgeville has returned and resumed normal operations. We have accomplished significant achievements and progress in 2022 that have not only strengthened us as a city, but we have benefited our citizens and the community at large as well. In the area of public works, our public works department completed a variety of resurfacing projects throughout the city, utilizing 128 tons of asphalt and 370 yards of concrete. The department planned and coordinated and remodified paved, paving the intersection of Holly Hill and Tanglewood. The streets department repaved Fieldstone Drive. And I know you all were glad to see that uh, accomplishment because we received so many phone calls in reference to Fieldstone Drive. In 2019, 2020, and 2021, the Local Maintenance and Improvement Grants, LMIC, projects were completed in 2022. These resurfaced banked streets projected total $1.3 million. Public Works received the 2022 ELMIC funding from the Georgia Department of Transportation in the amount of $210,642.18. The 
The Stormwater Department completed 47 work order requests. Some stormwater improvements that have been completed during 2022, including finalizing the installation of new storm drain vaults on Pine Valley Road, the removal, replacement, and modification of the stormwater system at the Holly Hill and Tangle Road intersection, and the stabilization of Bridge Foundation on Blandy Road. The ground maintenance, cemetery parks, Yards, trimmings, collections departments completed 59 work order requests and collected and disposed of 1,894 tons of yard debris. James Hicks and Gentry Load received the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Stormwater Inspector Certifications. In the area of public safety, the Millersville Police Department secured the agency DUI Hero of the Year Award at the 18th annual Mad Golden Shields Honor. Major Link Boyer secured Officer of the Year Award and K-9 Officer of the Year Award. Officer Jalen Webb secured the Rookie of the Year Award. The Millersville Police Department was awarded a Millersville Exchange Club grant totaling $500, which was used to purchase car seats to be given out to the community. The Police Department also received a grant from the Millersville Rotary Club totaling $2,500, which was used to purchase each officer a North American Rescue individual first aid kit. Major Etta Gray was selected to serve on the 2022 Jefferson Awards Multiplying Good Board of Selectors. Officer Jalen Webb was selected as Law Enforcement Officer of the Year by the Morris Little Post 6 American Legion Family, Department of Georgia. Detective Philip Vinson and Sergeant Thomas obtained the Federa Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, drone license and are both FAA licensed airplane pilots. Detective Philip Vinson was certified through Magnet Axiom and as a Magnet Certified Forensic Examiner and certified by Get Data in Forensic Explorer Introduction Training. Sergeant Thomas Smith and Officer Raymond Borders became certified in motorcycle crash reconstruction. The new tough books and laptops were purchased for 35 uh, MP, uh, Millersville Police Department vehicles. Our Millersville Fire and Rescue Services ended the year with 324 calls for services. Millersville Fire Rescue Service was recognized for creating a music, music video promoting Fire Safety Week. I thought maybe we would have had that running. We're not going to be able to show <laughs> it. We don't have the audio. Okay. Felicia Jones was promoted, <coughs> excuse me, to the department's first female fire inspector and assistant fire marshal. The Millersville Fire Rescue Service's summer job shadowing program targeting at-risk youth raised $4,776.11. Millersville Fire Rescue Services completed, uh, competed in the annual Police and Fire Olympic Games Summer Games. Renovations to Fire Station 1 were completed. And so you see a picture of our uh, police and fire games up there, the fire station of Renovation 1, and uh, the Millersville Fire Rescue Assistance with fire at the bottom. In the area of water and sewer, our water and sewer department received the Platinum Award for the James Ball Water Treatment Plant and the Platinum Award for the Lamar Ham Water Treatment Plant. The water and sewer department also reads received the Water uh, Fluoridation Quality Award. The department completed conditions, assessment of SCADA for the water and wastewater treatment facilities. Lauren Poloski, I hope I'm pronouncing this Skate. right. Poloski? Powelski. Okay, Powelski, thank you. Mm -hmm. Has hired, uh, was hired as the administrative assistant for the water and sewer department. Billy Sue Heaton, 
class one water treatment plant operator, was hired as the assistant superintendent for the water treatment plant. Shane Lindsay achieved his water treatment laboratory certification. Brandon Bush achieved his class three water treatment plant operator certification. The Millersville Water Pollution Control Plant treated 1.53 million gallons of sewage bought in by septic haulers. The installation of a new pump was completed at the main lift station. The South Primary Clarifier was rebuilt and a line slewer was installed at Headworks to lower the cost of the pH adjustments. The South Final Clarifi Clarifier and the East Bar Screen were placed back into operations after being out of service for several years. A gearbox and spare were rebuilt from the centrifuge. Okay, moving on. In the area of utility maintenance, our utility maintenance department addressed a total of 549 water and sewer complaints. The utility maintenance continued replacing water lines along West Thomas Court in 2022. This installation now provides improved residential water and fire protection service to approximately 15 to 20 residents in the area. The sewer main replacement along with along Doe's Boulevard was completed. Five new employees successfully joined the department, three utility service workers, one heavy equipment operator, and one utility supervisor, superintendent, I'm sorry. Our new utility superintendent completed his distri distribution operation and maintenance training course. In the area of city administration, our finance department maintained major functions of the city such as finance, payroll, procurement, utility building, business license, property taxes, hotel motel taxes, all revenues, etc. All these functions were used to manage a budget more than $35 million. Key finance personnel maintain their certified local finance officers certification. The finance department received the Government Finance Officers Association uh, certification of achievement in financial reporting for the 37th consecutive year. Our Human Resources Department received a $10,000 wellness grant to promote healthy awareness for city employees. Employees receive cert uh, certifi certificates of recognition for their services. Sandra Witherspoon received her Certificate of Human Resource Management. Eight planning and zoning public hearings were held, including the annexation of property along North Columbia Street for the public shopping center. The Main, uh, Main Street Department celebrated the creation of its first junior Main Street Board. Main Street initiated and adopt a planter program through downtown, which was a huge success. Main Street also hosted a Burger Week promotion along with Visit Milledgeville and the GA Beef Board. And we're sorry about our projection slide. It's not working tonight. The Millie Market was held in the East Annex. These events, along with First Fridays, the Hometown Celebration, and Deep Roots Festivals were a few of the great happenings that occurred in 2022 that drew a lot of new people to downtown Milledgeville, thus reestablishing a large sense of community. So I should, look, Mr. Griffin just clicking and moving and stopping, okay? <laughs> uh, so, the mayor, City manager and executive staff hosted the Lakeview Academy Student Abas Ambassador Program. 80 ambassadors learned about local government, toured various city departments, and participated in a scavenger hunt. Guest speaker Craig Portwood from GMC College also conveyed to the ambas ambassadors the importance of leadership. 
The mayor has served on several boards and committees, both locally and statewide, and is the past president of the Georgia Municipal Association, District 6. The mayor is also active, actively an active member of the National League of Cities. Other highlights in 2022 was a joint resolution with the Baldwin County on local option sale tax lost. Negotiations were approved in July. The city and the county completed SPLOS extensions negotiations and approved of an IGA calling for a referendum. Flock cameras were installed community-wide in conjunction with the Baldwin County Sheriff's Office, the Milledgeville Housing Authority, and the Central State Local Redevelopment Authority. The city received $10,000 from the Georgia si Safe Sidewalks for the removal of sidewalk vertical displacement. The Fishing Creek Trail expansion has now been completed. The city sponsored its community independence fireworks again in 2022, the first time since 2019. City Hall front lobby modifications have been completed, and we invite you to stop by and see them. City Hall uh, front lobby modifications have um, been completed, and the city recognized the Juneteenth as an official holiday and added it to its annual holiday schedule. Ms. Shania Mapp was elected to serve as council person for vacant District 5C. Plans were finalized to include citizen input during the city council work session. Again, these are just a few of the activities completed by the city and the accomplishments achieved by our city employees this past year who have been on the front lines of serving this community. The City Council and I are profoundly grateful for the dedication of our employees and the high level of service that they deliver to our constituents daily. While COVID continued to cause all of us to, ta to do uh, tasks in new and different ways and has created a dynamic that brings on the need for new management processes, we believe it's time to move forward with an attitude of not just maintaining the status quo, but again, working in a direction guided by the strategic planning. To begin the 2023 year, myself, council, and executive, executive staff set aside one week in January to participate in a planning session facilitated by members uh, service consultants with Georgia Municipal Association. As a result of that session, we have formulated a new vision and a mission statement as well as values for the city, which were used to set goals and objectives and create a three-year working plan which will help guide us in our work over the next three years. Additionally, the city as well as the county recently approved the new 2023 Baldwin County Joint Comprehensive Plan which was developed by the Middle Georgia Regional Commission through a series of meetings with stakeholders that included elected and appointed government officials, as well as community citizens. A component of this joint comprehensive plan is a five-year work component uh, plan that will also guide the city's activities, as well as to work uh, to work with the accomplishment to accomplish the activities contained in the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan can be found on the city's website and we look forward to rolling out new visions, missions, values, and plans in the near days to come. Another major component of our 2023 planning will be redrawing the City Council District lines as a mandate of the 2020 Census. I encourage you to be watchful for that process in the months to come. In closing, let me thank you for the honor of serving you as your mayor. I am extremely proud of the things we have been able to accomplish by working together. Mayor and council working together. City and county leaders working together. Helping your neighbors and sacrificing for the common good. 
thereby making our city and community stronger and able to withstand any difficulties that come our way. Thank you for entrusting us, the elected officials, and the staff of the city of Milledgeville with the task of managing the operations of this great city. We value your confidence and support as we strive to make Milledgeville a place, fl uh, a flourishing place to live, work, and play. And I also add educate. May God bless you all. Thank you. that that was very informative for those of you that came out to share with us tonight and to hear in what we have done or is doing in the city of Milledgeville. You all have received a copy of the minutes of the February 14th council meeting. Are there any corrections? Do I hear a motion to adopt the minutes? Move we adopt. Second. I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Mr. Chambers? Aye. Ms. Mapp? Aye. Ms. Schenholster? Aye. Ms. Malden? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. The minutes are adopted as official. We don't have any old business, so I will move to new business and ask the clerk to read resolution R-2302-09 by caption. To authorize a contract with Zambelli Fireworks Manufacturing Company to provide a fireworks display during the Independence Day celebration in Milledgeville. You all have heard the resolution. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Chambers? Aye. Ms. Mapp? Aye. Ms. Schenholster? Aye. Ms. Walden? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. The motion carries and the resolution is adopted as official. I will ask the clerk to read resolution R-2302-10 by caption. A resolution approving the Milledgeville Housing Authority issuance of bonds under the Tax Equity and Fiscal, Fiscal Responsibility Act to provide supplemental funding for the Orchard Hill Landing Project. You all have heard the resolution. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Is there didn't any? He say, didn't the attorney say that we didn't need to vote on that tonight, Hank? Because they had another public hearing? Uh, they, they have a public hearing that will be included. The date of that public hearing will be included on this agreement, so it will not be signed by the mayor, until even if y'all authorize her that, until that is filled in. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, if, if it's okay to vote on that, I'm all right with it. Is there any discussion? I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Mr. Chambers? Aye. Ms. Mapp? Aye. Ms. Schenholster? Aye. Ms. Walden? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. The motion carries and the resolution is adopted as official. We have two alcohol applications tonight and two renewals. I'll ask the clerk to please present the first alcohol application. Um, actually, and both of these are for the same person. I think we actually have a Mr. Resolution, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Of who? who? Uh, resolution 230209. Uh, the agreement was Zambelli Fireworks. I think he read that one already, and we. Uh, yeah, that's the first one. We did. Yeah, that okay. was the first one he first did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we're square away. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm running back and forth tonight. It's okay. So. <laughs> um, what were you saying? Okay, I, I, uh, these were the both. Actually, you'll see that they're both of the same okay. company, but different locations and for different okay. elements. So the first is for SZST LLC doing business as Tiger Market, 
and it is for um, Taskier Actor Tofik. T O U F I Q E, and it is for uh, it is for 1431 West Hancock Street, Suite 100, and it's for beer package to go. The second one is also for uh, I want to put in an order. Taskier uh, Heater Tafik. Uh, on behalf of SZST LLC, doing business as Tiger Bottle Shop, located at 1431 West Hancock Street, Suite 200, and it is for beer, wine, liquor package to go. Uh, so those two, I guess we need to vote on those separately. Both. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm sorry. So that's okay. So you the first for for the um, Tiger Market, located at 1431 West Hancock Street, Suite 100. Okay. So you've heard the first uh, application. Is there a motion to approve? Move. We approve. Second. Is there any discussion? Just a question. Where, where, is this like right before you get to the bridge? Um, yes. Um, it's mm -hmm. where the old handy pantry was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was trying to figure out where towards the school. Mm, okay. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Uh, so I have a motion to say so I'm ready. Uh -huh, okay. Um, so let me get back to that. So here's the vote on that first one. Uh, Mr. Chambers? Aye. Ms. Mapp? Aye. Ms. Shinholster? Aye. Ms. Walden? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. Okay. So now the second one is also for um, SZST LLC, uh, doing business as Tiger Bottle Shop, located at 1431 West Hancock Street, Suite 200, for beer, wine, liquor, package to go. All right, you have heard the application. Is there a motion to adopt? Motion to adopt. Second. Is there any discussion? Right, clerk, please call the roll. And this is uh, Mr. Chambers. Aye. Ms. Mapp. Aye. Ms. Shinholster. Aye. Ms. Walden. Aye. Dr. Lee. Aye. We also have two alcohol license renewal to consider. Since they are renewals, we can't approve them together. And if there are there is no objection from council. Hearing no objection, I will ask the clerk to present the renewals. Well, these I can do together. So uh, the first is for Georgia CVS Pharmacy LLC doing business as CVS Pharmacy, 960 North Columbia Street for beer and wine package to go. The second one is for MNK LLC doing business as shortstop located at 1600 North Columbia Street and that is also for beer and wine package to go. All right, you all have heard the renewals. Is there a motion to adopt both of them? Move, we approve. Second. Is there any discussion? I'm ask the clerk to please call the roll. Uh, Mr. Chambers? Aye. Ms. Mapp? Aye. Ms. Shinholster? Aye. Ms. Walden? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. The renewals are approved. There are no appointments to be made at this time, so that concludes the items of this agenda. Does anyone on council have any announcements or comments? Mayor, I'd like to just say one thing. I, I gave it to y'all two weeks ago, but I just wanted to call your attention and I'll make sure that there's another copy in y'all's boxes that the uh, adoption schedule for the 2024 uh, budget was given out two weeks ago. Um, I just call that to your attention because basically after March 28th, we have a, a, a work session every Tuesday after that until we get the budget approved. So I just wanted to call your attention to that so everybody could get their get those on their schedules. Um, mm -hmm. and also to share with you that uh, I had a conversation with um, uh, Drew Young from Senator Warnock's office the other day and they are expecting from us and will be receiving from us a uh, application for some congressionally directed spending that uh, may pay for our um, new belt press at the wastewater treatment plant, which would enable us to have about an additional million dollars left over in our offer to be able to extend. So um, we're keeping our fingers crossed on that one. So. Jesus, man. <laughs> well, I'm just going to say the application will be there. So. All right. 
So there are n no more announcements or con uh, comments. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Santa. Okay. Third, fourth. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful.